Spelljammer has long been confirmed. We have a, a, a couple of books all in one set coming out. We've got a bunch of player options. Let's talk about some of those playable races. Yeah, tell me about the Astral Elves. So one of the things we have been unveiling over the last few years about the mythic story of elves is that after their creation, they spread throughout the D&D multiverse and elves, because they were originally a people who could adopt various forms, like their progenitor, the god Corallon, they are particularly susceptible to being changed over thousands of years by the environment that they have turned into their home. So that's why wood elves, for instance, have abilities that are distinct from high elves, that are distinct from drow, that are distinct from sea elves, and so on. I was inspired to include them as I was researching Spelljammer. And yes, this is research for me. I, I watched science fiction a lot, um, including Star Trek. And I thought, well, you know, I love Spock. Uh, you know, he's got the ears of an elf, kind of. And I thought, well, we would be remiss if we didn't have a race that was sort of like a little nod, tip of the hat to, to Mr. Spock. And I thought, well, what, what if elves from the Feywild had made their way to the Astral Sea to be closer to their gods and discovered, of course, once you're in the Astral Sea, you don't age. You don't suffer hunger or thirst. So you can just hang out there for thousands of years. So you've got these elves who are thousands, if not tens of thousands, if not millions of years old, living out there in the Astral Sea. That's kind of a fun concept to play with. Sort of the ultra-wise, um, been there, done it kind of elf um, who doesn't look a day over, you know, 30. Right. Who's got that sort of, um, still got the sparkle of star gleam in their eye. Um, and then the challenge was to, to sort of make them interesting as a playable concept. And I think uh, for that, we sort of leaned into what we've been doing with elves recently in some of our other products. And so in Spelljammer, we've now introduced elves who have for millennia resided within the astral plane. And just as the Githyanki have been transformed by spending centuries in this ageless realm, so too astral elves have been transformed by it. And they went there almost on pilgrimage so that they could be closer to the realms of the gods. And leaning into that theme, we gave astral elves, as people saw in the Unearthed Arcana where they first appeared, various abilities that have a divine feel to them. You know, there are cantrips that they can, you know, that they have access to, uh, like sacred flame that is normally associated with clerics. Uh, they have a luminous teleportation ability. Also, like the Githyanki, who appear in Monsters of the Multiverse, they have the ability each day to tap into the consciousnesses that are in the astral plane and change a skill proficiency each day as they basically adopt a piece of knowledge from the astral plane itself. I'll segue for a second into a little bit of sort of D&D multiverse lore. For, for those who don't know, what is this astral plane, this strange realm of starlight? It is a realm of thought that connects to all of the outer planes, which are places ultimately of belief. And so if you are in this realm of thought, you might be there physically, but you are in a way starting to bleed into almost a thought version of yourself. This is one of the reasons why uh, creatures don't age in the astral plane. Now this is distinct from wild space, which is in a way, the portion of the astral plane that is closer to the material plane. Right. And it's in wild space where suddenly sort of time kicks in, people can age, but it's specifically in that astral plane, in that realm of thought and, of, and with close proximity to divinity, that astral elves, that is where they have resided for thousands of years. And because of that, again, like Githyanki, they have taken on certain characteristics associated with that realm. And what I love about this is like when they meditate, they can just kind of grab like 
you can theme in a lot of different ways, but like memories, like it's having genetic memory of, of, of a skill long past or... Well, and in the case particularly of the skill, because this is what's special about them distinct from some of the other elves, because in Monsters of the Multiverse, we have the new version of the Sea Elves, the Shatterkai, and the Aladrin. They also, each day as a part of their trance, are able to gain a weapon or a tool proficiency but Astral Elves can go deeper and actually get a skill proficiency, just as Gith Yankee can. And that's because, unlike other elves who are delving just into elven memory, Astral Elves delve into memory itself. Uh, because sort of the Astral Plane, in a way, holds memories from peoples of all sorts, from all worlds. Oh, okay. And, and that's why the Astral Elves trance isn't just called trance, it's called Astral trance. It goes deeper than the normal Elven trance. Uh, and this is, this is very intentionally, we connected the Astral Elves trance to the ability that the Githyanki have that's also associated with the Astral plane. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, what, what is kind of the characteristics of being an astral elf? I mean, I know that they glow and stuff, but they've got like an empire in the entire deal. Yes, so there are these astral elves uh, who feature prominently in the adventure in the Spelljammer box. And yes, there are some who have built this world-spanning empire and like many empires, that empire is hungry. Uh, <laughs> empires tend to develop an appetite. Uh, and in this case, their appetite is for worlds. And uh, over the course of the adventure, people will meet astral elves who are working for that empire, but also astral elves who are working against it. And uh, so I was interested to, to really sort of drill down and do something interesting with them in the adventure. And so... I figured if we're gonna do if we're gonna give them that much attention, we might as well try to make them a playable option as well. And uh, of course, you can also be an astral elf yourself uh, because of us providing them as a playable option. If you liked this interview and you'd like to see more, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that little bell symbol so you're notified anytime a video like this comes out. Thank you so much for watching.